Brighton Nozzle. Vice President, Gloria Morasco. Secretary, James Lima. Board members, Jack Tobin, Joe Trevino, Lisa Anthony, and Sandra Bohm. The Mayor of Shiller Park, Barb Piltaver. Mayor of North Lake, Jeffrey Sherwin. Fire Chief Corey Ryan from Leiden Township. Senator Don Harmon from Illinois 39th Legislative District. And all of our other representatives from police and fire and our libraries uh, and dignitaries in attendance, please rise and be recognized. morning, you're going to have the honor to hear from a number of people who are much more exciting and interesting than me. Having said that, this would be the point where I would introduce Ms. Julie Ewart from the United States Department of Education. We sent an invitation to Arnie Duncan, the U.S. Secretary of Education, and his schedule would not allow him to attend. But he said he was going to send Ms. Ewart in his place. And uh, as you uh, may have guessed, we've had some weather issues today. So Julie was not able to join us. And so the, uh, the White House asked that we share a letter from Arnie Duncan, U.S. Secretary of Education. So I'd like to read that to you today. Dear Lightning Community High School District 212, I am pleased to send greetings on the occasion of your being recognized by the College Board as an Advanced Placement District of the Year. I think there's nothing more important we can do than get our young people off to a great start in life. All of us have a role in this important work. President Barack Obama has said, what is required of us now is a new era of responsibility, a recognition on the part of every American that we have duties to ourselves, our nation, and the world. Duties that we do not grudgingly accept, but rather seize gladly, firm in the knowledge that there is nothing so satisfying to the spirit, so defining of our character, than giving our all to a difficult task. One such task is ensuring that our children learn and reach their full potential. The President and I believe that preparing young people for success in life is both a moral obligation of society and an economic imperative for our country. Children have only one chance for an education, and children who are now in school need a better education today if they're to thrive and succeed tomorrow. That's why we must continue to emphasize the importance of education to the future of our young people and to our nation standing in the world. Raising the bar and creating a college-going culture are important elements for success. Efforts such as yours in support of the students of Lydon Community High School District 212 are helping to realize the dreams we all share for a better future. Please accept my congratulations, Arnie Duncan. I sent a letter link to all of my family members saying it's not very often I get quoted in the same article as the U.S. Secretary of Education. So that was a big day in the Poliak family. <laughs> now, Obviously, not everyone who wanted to attend could be here this morning. So we collected some video submissions from recent graduates, from former employees, and from members of our distinguished alumni wall of fame. I'd like to thank Janine Asmus for collecting videos and Dominic Manola for putting, putting the following video together. And so uh, I just ask that you please enjoy. Greetings, my students. Guy from your book, class of 1977. It's back. Here's my new one. And here's me. In glorious black and white. I just wanted to take a minute to give a shout out and congratulations to my old alma mater for making the AP honor roll. But not only to make the AP honor roll, but also to be chosen as a 2013 AP District of the Year. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's stupendous. You know, when I went to life, I had a really good time. I mean, I learned a lot. Actually, I'm not kidding. I learned a lot. Seriously, I had some really great teachers back then. And it's very gratifying to know that 
tradition or striving for excellence continues on to this day. Keep up the great work. Just keep up the great work. What? Yeah. I told them to keep up the great work. Yeah. They don't need my help. They're doing great. It's the best you hear, aka Miss L, Miss Len, Coach, or from some colleagues, Bestie. Uh, I taught AP Calculus uh, at West Leiden from 1998 to 2007. Um, I totally loved those nine years there. I got some great memories, and I can talk for hours about them, but uh, I won't. <laughs> A couple of memories were um, the books on the senior spaces when I pulled out Play-Doh. They realized we were going to play with Play-Doh and do calculus. Or the light bulbs that went on when they finally, finally figured out what a related rate was and how to deal with it. Or um, the evening, late evening pizza parties to help prepare for that AP test. All those memories, they were, they were so much fun. Um, had a great time there. Great work with the students and uh, missed the faculty here. Hi, my name is Susan Schnowski. I graduated in 2013. Uh, I took nine AP classes. By taking AP classes, I was able to become comfortable with the fast-paced uh, schedule of uh, college courses, and it has helped me transition into college better. Um, it has also uh, given me credits that allowed me to get ahead in college. I graduated from Leiden, West Campus. Very pleased to learn that Leiden is on the AP honor roll and is a 2013 AP District of the Year. These are very important honors, and I'm very pleased to be here. So congratulations to everyone involved. Here I'm Fifth here, and as a Lyman alum and a recipient of the Wall of Fame Award, I really want to congratulate Lyman on being placed in the AP Honor Roll and being chosen as the 2013 AP District of the Year. My dog is happy for you, too. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm Dr. John I taught AP English Language and Literature at East Lyden from 1994 until I retired in 2003. And I would like to add my voice to those congratulating Lyden for its recognition as the AP 2014 National District. Congratulations, Lyden High School. I'm Paul Sacco, Hall of Famer for the class of 1971. I cannot tell you how proud I am to know that you have received the 2013 Award for AP District Scouts. Your class is being up. Hi, my name is Fran Rugo. I went to East Lighting High School and graduated in 2008. Um, the AP courses that I took were, were uh, U.S. History AP with Mr. Markey. European History AP with Mr. Tazek, Italian AP with Mr. Bodine, and English 3 AP with Mr. Garter. Each one of those AP classes uh, have helped me and shaped me uh, as a student beyond Leiden um, so much more than I can explain. Good evening, Mr. Leiden. My name is John Hunter. Leiden class of 1954. And in 1988, I was honored to be one of the recipients of the Live Ball Bank Award. Uh, I taught at the place for this art at uh, Edward High School for many years. Uh, so it was with great admiration and pride uh, that I congratulate the live faculty to, for being chosen uh, as one of the only, only three schools in the school district, uh, the former in 77 on the college board. Uh, for a time honor selecting live for the AP District of the Year Award for 2013. My name is Kim Dossi, and I graduated in 2013, and I took four AP classes, AP Europe, AP English, AP Studio Art, and AP Psych. Taking AP Psych really exposed me to the field of psychology and made me realize that that is what I want to do as a career. It also exempted me from taking introductory classes at Psych and allowed me to already have the knowledge to help my roommates with their schoolwork in their introductory classes. Hello, everyone. Welcome. The 2013 AP District of the Year Award one. Doesn't that sound awesome? I'd like to congratulate the administration, the faculty, the students, the support staff, and the surrounding communities for this great award. I know on my last visit to Lyon in September of 2012, I was most impressed with the diversity I saw in the student body faculty, and the administration. And here at DuPont, 
We understand that by embracing diversity, and more importantly, embracing diversity of thought, you end up with greater collaboration, innovation, and excellence. And then the commitment that the district and the faculty and the students have to new technology, like the Chromebooks that I saw, well, it's no surprise that you've won this great award. So on behalf of the extended Wigan family of alums, the class of 1973, and the DuPont Company, I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations. Way to go, than me. At this time, I'd like to bring up Mrs. Karen Ritter, who's going to introduce uh, one of our teachers. Karen is the assistant principal at East Leiden, and she's going to tell you a little bit about Mr. Dave Narver. Introducing one of Leiden's most beloved teachers. Dave Narver has been teaching at East Leiden High School since 1994 and has taught a variety of classes including AP English Language and Composition, Freshman English, Beginning Drama, and Advanced Acting. He is the author of two books and numerous journal articles. If you ask Leiden graduates about the teachers whom they remember most, Mr. David Narver is certain to appear at the top of the list. Some of their fond memories may include his humor, his hilarious antics, and his encouragement of their efforts. But I would venture to guess that all of them would agree that he taught them more about English than any other experience in their lives. David Narder is a funny, dynamic, charismatic person, and when you walk into his class, you see a room full of energy, humor, and even perhaps some drama. Students don't even realize that they are learning because they have so much fun in this class. In all seriousness, Mr. Garner spends countless hours planning to deliver the best instruction possible. He provides real-world experiences for his students to make their learning relevant. He explores with innovation and technology which dramatically redefine what is possible in the English classroom. As an administrator, we get to observe lots of classrooms, and I have to say that Mr. Narder's is one of the best. I warmly introduce you to East Leiden's AP English Language and Composition teacher, Mr. David Narder. About uh, 20 years ago, I was called into my boss's office, and he told me that I would be teaching a brand new course we'd be teaching here at AP Language and Comp. I'd never heard of it. And uh, so he asked me and Mr. Lilly, my counterpart here at uh, Westline, to go to an AP uh, College Board workshop to learn a little bit about this course. And uh, the first document they put in front of us as soon as we sat down was this one. I know. Um, so Mr. Lilly leans over to me and he says two words. One of them was holy. I can't tell you what the other one was, but he wasn't praying. Um, let's get rid of that. You see, like your experience as a student, teaching AP is really tough. Our class sizes are no smaller, our pay is no greater, it's more grading, it's more prep, it's more rigor, it's more pressure for us, just like it is for you. You struggle in these classes, and so do we. So why do we do it? Here's what I think. As AP teachers, we dedicate ourselves to these classes and our students because in the end, as teachers, we know far more than in any other courses that we teach that we're providing real, tangible value to our students. When our students leave here with college credit, they save thousands of dollars, and that's really rewarding to us as well. Besides the financial value for students, there's the intellectual value for ourselves. AP classes keep us really sharp in our field of study. It keeps us practicing within our field. With my other classes, I really work at being a good teacher of English. With my AP classes, I'm learning at the same time that I'm teaching. No matter how many times I teach this course, I spend most of the year relearning these skills with my students, and many of which can probably tell you I haven't quite figured them all out yet. 
But most important, to the point of today's celebration, as an AP teacher, I get to intellectually engage with people whom I feel tremendously lucky to have met and to have taught. And specifically, at Leiden High School, some brilliant people, people that I have become friends with, friends that I've seen married, have children, become leaders in their professions, people who continue to work to open the doors of opportunity for themselves and for their families. Over 20 years, I've come to understand how important those relationships are to my teaching, and I've come to realize that it wasn't just AP skills that I was teaching. More importantly, I was teaching these skills to my students. And knowing that makes all the difference for me and to the rest of your teachers. But 20 years ago, that morning that I was at that AP workshop, I was getting a lot of bad advice from some well-meaning veteran AP teachers from other schools about how to prepare my students for success. Advice that just doesn't make a lot of sense here alike. Among the things that was suggested to me was to have students read seven or eight books a semester, write a fully formed essay for a week, and assign about 90 minutes to two hours of homework a night. I know. <laughs> Pretty soon, though, I realized that teaching that is extremely rigorous is not necessarily good teaching. You see, it's very easy to weigh you guys down with two hours of homework a night per class. It doesn't take a lot of pedagogical imagination to uh, throw worksheets and essays and give you two hours of homework and call that teaching. Because any kid that can get through it all is probably going to do well on the test. That's not what we do here. And this is where your AP teachers, Leiden AP teachers, deserve a real pat on the back. Because at Leiden, our success is not a product of more assignments and more homework. It's a product of efficient, concentrated instruction. It's a product of instruction that's designed with a respect for the complex lives filled with added responsibilities and unique challenges that so many of our students live. We, your teachers, design courses specifically for you, our students. And clearly, we do it pretty well. Now, as I was leaving a workshop that day, a veteran teacher grabs me by the arm, and he says, listen, you want to be doing this job in three years? Here's what you got to do. Limit participation in the class. You make sure that the students who take the class are the ones who are going to succeed at the class. What he told me to do was to bar entry to my class with task prerequisites, entrance exams, other kinds of stop gates. The final piece of advice he gave me was, don't let them take the test unless you're sure they're going to score three. And that's why you are lucky to be at this school. That's not what we do here. At Lighting, we open the doors of opportunity to every student willing to aspire to something greater. Many of your parents and your grandparents and many of you travel over oceans, across deserts, all for the opportunity to work hard and succeed, to take advantage of the opportunity and promise that this country and its public schools has to offer, and it would be criminal to deny you that opportunity. And that is what we celebrate here today. The dreams of your parents and your grandparents who decided that in all the world, this was the place, Leiden High School, where you would work hard to grasp every opportunity that was available to you. And today, we celebrate that and the school and the teachers who are dedicated to making that happen. Thank you. I'd like to invite Mr. Will Wagner to the microphone. Will is the principal at West Leiden, and he's going to introduce one of our students, Julius Figueroa, um, who has some comments to share with you today. Good morning. It's my privilege to introduce Julius Figueroa. Julius is a role model of what a Leiden student should be. He has taken advantage of all that is offered. He has been in band all four years that he has been at Leiden. He has been a lead access mentor for the past two. He has taken AP courses his sophomore, his junior, and his senior year. And he has a 4.4 weighted GPA. Julius has been accepted at Columbia University and plans on studying philosophy. Two of his teachers have shared the following. Julius is obviously very intelligent, generally cares for others, and has a great personality. 
Another said, Julius is a self starter whose motivation for success surpasses some of the best students who have ever been alive. Julius, thank you for what you have added to life. The ability to speak on behalf of the entire Lighting AP program is an honor. In fact, it almost seems a daunting task because AP at Leiden is something different. It is not just a list of classes with more homework and expensive exams. It has taken me a few years to realize this, but now I am certain that AP at Leiden has its own culture. Our teachers outdo themselves daily to maintain its culture and to ensure its constant growth. The students run through walls to meet and exceed both their teachers and their own expectations. I'm honored to say, and I believe many would agree, our AP program offers us a chance to be extraordinary. In general, I would say our teachers have tried to impart three lessons throughout our AP careers. Discipline, critical thinking, and the merits of learning for learning's sake. Now, when I say discipline, this is where the countless hours of homework and studying come into play. I know each and every one of my classmates can relate to the idea of late nights, inevitable procrastination, or the occasional desire to simply drop everything and cry. <laughs> it's funny because some of you think I'm joking. <laughs> All jokes aside, I've learned that hard work is not only completely necessary, but also respectable. Going back to my English class last year, I remember the first day when our teacher told us we were in for one of the hardest classes of our lives. Not because of the complexity of the subject material, but simply because of the amount of notes we have to take each night. Although there were times when my classmates and I came dangerously close to giving up, the satisfaction of seeing our outstanding test scores at the end of the year made us realize none of it was in vain. We all succeeded because of our complete devotion to discipline. That being said, I have also learned that hard, works, hard work only makes up half of the ingredients for academic success. Aside from a bit of luck, the rest comes down to one's ability to rationalize, conceptualize, and simply think critically. On the first day of my English class, our teacher told us to analyze a picture of a woman wearing a dress, sunglasses, and a trash can lid as a hat. After a couple minutes, the class had completely exhausted its bank of ideas, reactions, and observations. Our teacher, however, however had a different agenda. With a little prodding, we spent that entire class period and a couple of extra days analyzing that one picture. In the end, we had completely abused the image itself, but all of us walked away with a newfound appreciation for analysis and critical thinking. For myself, I became confident in my abilities to think in a more abstract way, and this has helped in each of my AP classes since. Whether it is trying to rationalize the concept behind a derivative and calculus, or wrapping my head around the meaning of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium cloud, whatever that is. I would argue critical thinking is even more important than hard work, simply because anyone can work hard, but not everyone can think critically. Very recently, I learned what I consider to be the most important lesson out of the three, an appreciation of learning for learning's sake. With the ongoing pressures of college applications, scholarships, GPAs, class ranks, expectations, and deadlines, we as students often lose sight of the real goal. We get caught up with our grades and forget what they really mean. Far too often we equate A's with intelligence, C's with mediocrity, and F's with failure. It is this poisonous mindset that I have learned to overcome here at Leiden. In my freshman year, back when everything was new, one of my teachers stood up in front of the class and told us all flat out we were all grade brothers. Back then, this idea seemed silly to me. What could possibly be wrong with striving to get perfect grades? Now I realize this teacher was always right. There is nothing wrong with a 4.0 GPA, but there is something wrong with putting this goal on top of your desire to learn. I have been able to take more out of all of my classes at Leiden with this realization. I have found the desire to learn is absolutely necessary. I have found grades are just letters on a piece of paper, something to be forgotten 10 or 20 years from now. I have found grades come naturally if you fully engage yourself in what you're learning. As I said before, AP at Leiden is a culture. 
each teacher strives for and attains his or her own brand of excellence. Whether it's through keeping students engaged long enough to finish 700 pages of Les Miserables, or playing the French national anthem at the beginning of class while teaching the French Revolution. Although I do not have many points of comparison, I know we have something special here at Leiden. Our teachers are not ordinary. Our students are not ordinary. We are all extraordinary. Thank you. Dr. Chris Cook is the superintendent of schools for the state of Illinois. He had planned to be in attendance today, uh, but his schedule with the Illinois State Board of Education brought about a conflict. Instead, he asked if he could send along a video message to share this morning. We appreciate Dr. Cook's leadership and his time in preparing the following message. Hi, my name is Chris Cook, state superintendent of education. I'm sorry I couldn't join you today. I want you to know how incredibly proud I am of the national recognition you received at Leiden High School. You have demonstrated through your efforts that having high expectations for students matters through your achievement in the number of students taking advanced placement courses as well as their performance. You have demonstrated that this is possible for all learners and that expectations matter. Thank you on behalf of the State Board of Education for your efforts. And, and again, congratulations on this very important achievement. Thank you. Trevor Packer currently serves as the Senior Vice President of the Advanced Placement Program. He's a former classroom teacher. Um, he's led the AP program since 2003. In that time, participation in AP exams has more than doubled. What's more, AP classrooms have also significantly diversified over the last 11 years. And in many states, the average AP exam scores are now higher as well, demonstrating that hundreds of thousands of students are benefiting from greater access to advanced placement and ultimately to increased college opportunity. In addition to the advanced placement program, Trevor also oversees the College Board's development of instructional programs, including AP Capstone, and springboard. Now Trevor uh, was scheduled to be on an airplane from New York to Chicago this morning and you may have guessed what happened there. And so uh, pitch hitting for Trevor this morning is the Vice President of the College Board's Midwest Region. Please help me welcome Mr. Greg Walker. So I live relatively close. I was sitting in Panera Bread this morning. My Blackberry buzzes. I look at it. It's the delay. Trevor is very sorry that he's not able to be here with you today. He takes great pride and has great passion for what the AP program is able to provide for students across the country. So in my conversation with Barbara Cronin and with Trevor Packard this morning, they asked if I could uh, bring greetings on behalf of the college board. And as the vice president for the Midwest region, I felt honored to be able to do so. But I will tell you, I'm not Trevor Packard. <laughs> Thinking about this morning and what it really means, the 2013 AP District of the Year, you have on your screen commitment plus access equals excellence. We at the College Board are focused on delivering opportunity. And when you think about delivering opportunity, what you all have done in this district exemplifies really what that means. Chief Justice Alan Page says opportunity without preparation is a broken promise. And if you think about it, there are lots of students across America that are receiving broken promises. 
And it would pain our hearts if it were any of our own children or if it was you to receive a broken promise. What you've been able to do here at Lighting is to deliver on opportunities and promises for young people. The greatest predictor of post-secondary success is the rigor of the high school curriculum. And so when we think about what that provides for us, I had the great opportunity for the folks over on this side over here, uh, as they were coming in uh, from their, their bus this morning, I had an opportunity to talk to a few students. And so I said, what courses are you in? And the first young lady that I talked to said, I'm in AP Biology. She rattled off a few more. The next person rattles off a few more. Start talking to some gentlemen. One person says, yeah, I've got three AP courses. The comment was, oh, you didn't think you wanted to take any? He says, the person next to me has got five. And I said, wow, what is this providing for you? And so then I went down the road and began to ask, so what are your plans? And I think that's what you all are doing for the students here. Every student that I spoke to had a plan for their life. They knew what they were doing, whether they were a junior or a senior. Uh, the students that I talked to, they were able to specifically say what they were doing next year. That is because of the great work that you all are doing here at Lyman. And so if we were to think about what does that mean, I would first like to ask that we would give the teachers a great round of applause. as an elementary school teacher. And I remember receiving some comments from parents. You're being a little bit too hard, you're moving a little bit too fast, and this class is just, you know, slow things down. They've got lots of time. Then I became a high school principal, and you received lots of challenges. My first day as a high school principal, I had a student come to my office and say to me, I'm in the wrong class. Very easy to fix. Show me your schedule, we'll take it to your class. It happened to be an AP class. Students said, teacher said, I'm not supposed to be here. That's not what you do here. In that situation, we had to change a culture. What you have here is a culture that is building great opportunities for students. And so my hat is off to you as teachers for number one, opening your doors to allow more students and light up school district an opportunity to advance themselves and to achieve rigor. I'd like to also, for any of you that are parents that are in the audience, please let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Every parent wants the best for their child. And so what you all are providing is what parents would call the best for them. You heard people give comments on getting ahead on credits, being able to tutor and help others that didn't have the same opportunities and experiences. And so parents were pushing and propelling your students, your children to move forward. And most importantly, let's give the students a round of applause. It is the student that is challenging themselves to go into a door and know that they're going to experience great rigor. And rigor not being stiff, not being this hard thing, not being, as you so eloquently said, all this extra, extra homework, but really challenging themselves to think critically, to be able to think analytically, and to really drive themselves into being very, very productive young people. And providing these opportunities, what, what we see here at the College Board, now I'll go to the prepared comments that were written. <laughs> So what the College Board saw when the College Board reviewed the AP results of all the districts in the United States in the past year, here's what you were able to do. Teachers, parents, students, the administration, everybody together. You increased the number of students gaining access to advanced placement courses by more than 100 students, and the success rate on your AP exams increased by nine percentage points. You ought to give yourselves a round of applause. I would 
say that you're defining the odds here. Here's, here's kind of how you think about that. If you expand the group to become larger, and the larger group did not have all the preparation that the smaller group may have had, then your success would decrease. In the written comments, it says if you had a choir, this great choir that was here, and you add a bunch of students to that choir, that choir probably will not perform as good as it did with that smaller number. But what you all are able to do is take the current AP numbers, find more students that have quality and capability to succeed, and bring them all together to achieve great success. And as your teacher shared, you don't look at it and say, well, Greg Walker, you probably shouldn't take the AP exam because uh, you're, it's just not a good idea. You encourage these students to challenge themselves. And so for that, the College Board is very proud to recognize you as the 2013 AP District Award winner. At this time, I'd like for our superintendent, Dr. Polyak, to please come forward. Board President Greg Ignafo to also please come. We're asking them to receive this district award on behalf of all the work of all of you all together. The College Board is proud. It says here, Lyman High School District 212 has been named the fourth annual district of the year. Small district in the Advanced Placement District Awards for expanding opportunity and improving performance for AP students. And for small districts in the United States of America, there's only one of these awards that's been given out in 2013, and that goes to Lydon School District. Give yourselves a round of applause. Before I close, a couple thank yous. There are two people who went above and beyond to organize this event today. Um, my administrative assistant, I'm not sure if she's in the room, but um, Mrs. Debbie Mazanik, and our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction, Dr. Mickel Storisley. We can just give them a round of applause for all of them. College Board, I can call you friends now. We had dinner together last night. <laughs> We'd like to say thank you. Thank you for recognizing the amazing work of our students and our teachers. Thank you for being here today and presenting us with this award. More importantly, thank you for the work you're doing for students across the country. Advanced placement courses provide opportunities for students who are simply ready to move on for more advanced content. Those courses create a bridge from high school into college that allows students to begin the next stage of their life with actual college credits and increased confidence in themselves. As a parent of four myself, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the millions of dollars that AP saves parents and students and college costs and loans down the road. This has been an amazing morning celebrating with all of you. And as you can see, Life is a place where amazing things happen every day. So thank you again for being here today, and please enjoy the rest of your day.